Greetings, saints and friends. Welcome to another evening of Bible study. We are happy to have you joining with us this evening. And, uh, I trust that you are doing well. Amen. It's truly a privilege that God has afforded us that we are able to gather in a fashion such as this to you know, dig into the word of God. Praise the Lord. Particularly now, the time that we are living in, it's very essential that as the people of God, we spend the time uh, reading and digesting the word of the Lord. Amen. It is the word of the Lord that will keep us in these troubling times. Praise the Lord. I uh, can't help but to acknowledge and to make mention of the many developments that are taking place in our world, in our very country here. Amen. There are so many things happening. The devil is on a rampage. But we, the people of God, we have a hope. We put our trust in our God who is able to keep and to preserve us. Amen. And uh, so tonight as we come together, I trust that the Lord will have his way. I trust that our hearts will be blessed and that at the end of tonight, we will be able to say that it was a blessing. Amen. Let us just pray before we get into it tonight. Lord, we give you thanks. We honor you. We exalt you for you are good. There is no God like you. We thank you for having kept us. Lord, we could not keep ourselves, but you have proven faithful. As we are gathered tonight, Lord, to study your word, we ask for revelation and inspiration. We ask that you will grant insight. Lord Jesus, let your word go forth with clarity. And Lord, open the understanding of the hearers. I pray that you will touch me even now. Let self be completely slain. Let all glory and honor and praise go to you and to you alone. Have your divine way. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. So tonight, we're just taking a break from the study that we have been looking at for the last couple of weeks with our Bishop, Bishop Daly. And we just want to look at a topic that I believe the Lord has laid on my heart that I want to share with you uh, through His grace tonight. Amen. It's a simple th topic. I must say I might not be as long with you as you know we usually are, but whatever the Lord will do tonight, uh, we know it will be perfectly done. So we put our trust in Him. Amen. What I want to look at tonight, the topic I have in mind, is thinking on things above thinking on things above. Now, I know that this is a relevant topic, particularly because we are living in the end times. The last and closing days, we can see the signs of the time giving us clear indications that any time now, amen, the trumpet of the Lord will sound and the church, the bride of Christ, will depart this troubled world. I don't know about you, but to be honest, I have really been homesick in recent times and I, I, I join with the songwriter that says I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I have never been before. Amen. No sad goodbyes will there be spoken. Praise the Lord. And heaven indeed is sounding sweeter all the time. And so amidst all the stress and the turmoil and the pain and the grief and agony that we experience on a daily basis as the children of God, just because we are residents of this world. Amen. We have a hope that in short order, we will be departing this world for our new home. Praise the Lord. I just want to encourage us to keep watchful, to be sober, and to remain vigilant. Praise the Lord Jesus. Let us look up because as the scripture says, our redemption draweth nigh. And so I want us to remain focused and keep our eyes set. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us just focus on things above. Let us not get distracted because we recognize that the enemy has turned things up to another level. Praise the Lord. He has gone into a new gear and the children of the Lord must equally rise to be able to overcome the challenges and the obstacles of the adversary. Praise the Lord. So we don't want to be uh, ignorant of the devices of the adversary. We want to ensure that we are sensitive, praise the Lord Jesus, to his tactics, that we are able to overcome and to survive in these times. Praise the Lord. So I want us just to turn 
to uh, Colossians chapter 3. Amen. We're just going to be reading a few verses there. That's going to be our theme scripture. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 3. Praise the Lord Jesus. And it reads, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek these things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Those scriptures are quite telling. We are admonished by the writer Paul, writing to the Colossians, that we are to set our affections on things above. Amen. I can't help but to think of this song that I love. It says, I don't want to get adjusted to this world. Praise the Lord. I've got a home that is so much greater. I'm going to go there soon or later. I don't want to get adjusted to this world. And so we understand that as it is now, we are children of the Lord. We have been called by his name. We have been bought with a price. And so we are residents here on earth. Yes, but the truth is that we are also citizens of heaven. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us and it refers to us as ambassadors for Christ. In other words, we have been sent on a God-given mission. Praise the Lord. We have been given a mandate from heaven to populate this earth, to take ownership, to take rule of our areas, of our, of our surroundings. Praise the Lord Jesus. We represent Christ wherever we go. That's the role of an ambassador. And we can use the, um, the example of the United States. They have an, um, an embassy up there at uh, Hope Road. And, you know, it is said that even though the embassy is located on Jamaican soil, it is the territory of the United States. So they are governed by a different law, so to speak, than that of the country of Jamaica. And so we can use that to make an, a point that even though we are living here on earth as children of God, praise the Lord Jesus, our ultimate constitution, our ultimate law is not the law of this land. Amen. We ought to obey the law of this land so much as it is in keeping with the laws of God. But we are ultimately responsible to ensure that we keep the constitution or the laws of heaven. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so God has sent us on a mission. He has called us out. Amen. He has called us to be set apart, to be, to be different. He says that we are royal priesthood. We are a chosen people. We are a holy nation, peculiar. Amen. He has called us out. And so we have to remember then that we are advised and admonished that we should be in the world, but not of the world. Praise the Lord Jesus. And any time now, when the Lord sees it fit, he is going to call us from our mission on earth. Praise the Lord. And so tonight, my, my, my assignment is to encourage us that we should not get distracted. Ever so often, we see these persons that are sent on missions to different countries. And they oftentimes get so invested, praise God, in what is happening in the country that they lose focus of what it is that they were sent about. Praise the Lord. I'm here to admonish us as children of God that this should not be our reality. Our eyes must be set on the prize. Praise the Lord. If I could borrow from what Jesus said when he spoke to his, his, his parents, the Bible said that they went up to Jerusalem as they did every year and that you know when they were leaving, the Bible said the child stayed back. And, you know, they went three days journey not recognizing that he had remained in Jerusalem. When they went and searched for him, praise the Lord, they found him in the temple. And when they, you know, spoke to him, he said to them, you know, I must be about my father's business. In other words, this was someone who was sent into the world, praise the Lord, to save the world, to save man from their sin. And he was saying, I cannot lose focus of the mission for which I was sent. 
I must be about my father's business. And so I understand that we have our responsibilities as human beings, amen, as citizens of this world, we have obligations to our families and to our places of employment, uh, to our communities, and you name it. But our ultimate responsibility is to effect the work of Almighty God. Praise the Lord. And so we are encouraged today by the words that Paul spoke to the brethren of Colos uh, the, to the Colossian brethren. Amen. He said, set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. Praise the Lord Jesus. To, to, to set there is a, a word that speaks of a deliberate action. Amen. It is an action that you are conscious about. He is saying you must fix your gaze on things above, not on things of this earth. Now, the things above are those things that pertains to the reign and the rule of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. The prayer that we, are oft, that we often pray and it is often referred to as the Lord's Prayer, it says, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Lord has called us to enforce, praise the Lord Jesus, the mandate of heaven on this earth. And so we as the people of God should not be sidelined. Amen. We should not be sidelined by anything that's happening around us. Our gaze must be fixed, praise the Lord, on the mission at hand. Set your affections on things above Amen. We see that the enemy, he is trying, you know, he's trying his very best. And there are so many distractions and there are so many smoke screens that are going up all around to, 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 to distract us from our focus. But we must be set. We must be fixed in our intention. Hallelujah. That comes what may, despite what the enemy might be doing. He is working his agenda. And so we are to ensure that we remain faithful and true to the mission of God. Praise the Lord. By any means necessary, we must be about our Father's business. Uh, the, the, the word, the translation that I read from is the King James uh, translation. And if I should look at another translation, it would not read if. It says that if you are, let me just read it. It says, if, the, if then ye be risen with Christ, we should seek the things that are above. But if I read from another translation, say the New Living Translation or the, uh, the, the, the NIV, it actually reads, since you have been risen with Christ, praise the Lord. So it's not a question that Paul was saying, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek the things which are above. It is actually saying, since you have been risen, because in chapter 2 of Colossians, Paul outlined to the brethren that they were now new creatures. They have gone through the born again experience. And what he was now proceeding to do was to give them instructions as to how they should live now that they have been redeemed. Now that they have been saved, you ought to now live at a higher level. Praise the Lord. There has to be a change in our walk. Amen. We cannot walk the same way we walked before we experienced salvation. And so Paul was encouraging them that you ought to live in accordance with your reality. Praise the Lord Jesus. Seek those things which are above, where Christ seated at the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above. Praise the Lord Jesus. Not just on the place heaven. But we ought to set it on the man, Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. His character, his rule, his will. Praise the Lord Jesus. We are called to a higher level. Praise God. And so affections speak to a feeling of liking or a caring for someone or something. That's the, the, the simple general definition of affections. And Paul is saying that our heart's affection now must be lifted from the things that are here on the earth to the things that are of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. The Bible tells us in St. Matthew, it says that we should lay our treasures up in heaven. Praise the Lord. Where neither moth nor rust corrupts, nor where thieves break in and steal. Praise the Lord Jesus. It goes on to say, for where our hearts is, 
Where our heart is there, will, where our treasure is, I'm sorry, there will our heart be also. And so, you know, we, we, we would have heard many times about the different banks, for example, in the United States that are collapsing and are going under, praise the Lord. And if you don't have an investment in any of those banks, it might not necessarily have an impact on you. But if all your life savings is in the NCB or the Scotia Bank or the, the, the First Caribbean and you get wind, praise the Lord, that one of those banks are going under, then you are going to have a problem. Because now all of your investment is at risk of going under. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so the Lord is saying to us through his servant Paul, this world is doomed for destruction. Praise the Lord Jesus. Not long from now, it is going to plunge. Praise God. And so if you are investing in this world, it's a bad investment. Praise the Lord Jesus. Might as well you take your stocks out and find somewhere else. And I'm here to encourage us that that place is heaven. God is saying to us, set your affections on things above. Put your investment in somewhere that is secure. No thief can break in and steal. There is no deflation, no inflation. Praise the Lord Jesus. The currency of heaven does not devalue. And so God is saying your best bet is to put your treasures in heaven. It is preserved. Hallelujah. Amen. It does not fade away. It lasts forever. And so there are many of us who are making foolish investments. We are losing out on salvation because we fail to recognize that the things of this world are but for a time. Temporary in nature. Praise the Lord Jesus. They fade in comparison to the things of heaven. And so while we can see these things and there is an inclination for us to go after them, we have to set our minds on things above. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Paul tells us that the, 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 the sufferings of our present time they are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. And so there has to be an assessment by every child of God. How much do we value the things of this life in comparison to our salvation? If we should put them in a balance, praise the Lord, in our eyes, which one would come out on top? Praise the Lord Jesus. We have oftentimes been putting too much emphasis on the things that are temporal. The things that will fade. The things that will devalue. Hallelujah. And so we are reminded today. You know, if I could use an example. Praise the Lord. To encourage us that we should not operate in a state of permanence with things that are temporary. I would probably use an example of, you, you know, you, you have your house. Let's say you bought your house. Praise the Lord. You saved for many years and you end up coming to a place now where you are able to buy your house. And maybe it's a second-hand house and it has some renovation that is necessary. And, you know, you, you, you're taking your time and you're doing it. But one weekend you decided, let me just go down to the north coast and, you know, book a stay in a hotel and enjoy, you know, the weekend. Praise the Lord. Don't have to do any cooking and any cleaning and all of that. I have room service. You name it. And I want us to consider that the weekend that we are booked into a hotel is temporary. Praise the Lord. It has a very limited time. We're going to be there for a couple nights. Then we're going to have to take our journey back home. The place that we left is permanent. Praise the Lord. And so you would be foolish to go to a hotel for a couple days and invest your savings in renovating a hotel room. You would consider it for yourselves and tell me if you think that makes any sense. You go to a hotel room and you're changing out the curtains. Hmm? And you're putting in a bed and you're, 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 you're thinking about painting and, and all of that. You're rearranging it for your comfort and your liking. When your home is permanent and needs fixing up, there are a lot of us who if we really assess our lives, that's what we are doing. We are placing greater emphasis on the temporary life on this earth. Praise the Lord. When the life which is to come, 
Hallelujah. We are looking at building our temporary earthly bank accounts when we are broke in the heavenly realm. Praise the Lord. And the Lord is saying there needs to be a shift in our lives. Our focus needs to shift from the things of this world. Praise the Lord Jesus. And we need to start investing in the things of heaven. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying to us that any time now, we're going to get a call that we need to check out. Hmm? When you're at the hotel, if you're staying in the room too long on the day when you need to leave, the front desk call you and remind you that, listen, sir, it's now time to check out. It's time to go back home. Praise the Lord. And all of that things that you, what you enjoyed for the weekend, the buffet and the, the, the pools and you name it, has to be left there. But now you are going back to a place hmm, where it's not so comfortable. You don't even have AC some of the times. You, you know, when you're in the hotel, you, 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 you use AC 24 7. You don't even turn it off. But when you go home, hmm, come on, I want you to consider it. The spiritual man is suffering while the temporal man is striving. Our earthly bank accounts might be flourishing while. In heavenly considerations, we are paupers. And so the Lord is saying that there needs to be a shift that the people of God need to start thinking more about things above because we are going to be called into account, praise the Lord, to give an account for the work that we did, praise the Lord Jesus. God is going to answer us. We have to give an account for the time that we were given here on earth. So we must do our work as ambassadors to please the one who sent us. Hallelujah. And so tonight I want to encourage us, praise the Lord Church, that we don't get distracted. That if we have been focusing on the wrong things, we set our priorities straight. Amen. The Lord is preparing his people to exit this world. Praise God Almighty. And so he is now setting his church in order. He is setting his things in order. He's calling on us. He's saying to us, listen, man, it's time for us to shape up. It's time for us to get ourselves in line. Praise the Lord Jesus. Set your houses in order. That's the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so tonight we want to look at it. We, we can use, for example, amen, that the, the children of Egypt, the children of Israel, who were sent into Egypt for a temporary time, the Bible said that Egypt was, 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 was their way out of the famine because there was famine, praise the Lord, in the land. And so, you know, they, they, they were sent into Egypt. And that was just to preserve them. You remember that story with, with Joseph, how Joseph was sold. In, he was thrown in the pit, then thrown in the prison and sold into Egyptian captivity. And, you know, he went into prison. And, 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 and if you read it, you will recognize now that Joseph was elevated to being the prime minister of Egypt, praise the Lord. Pharaoh set him above the affairs of the land. And so because of that, when the, his brethren came into Egypt, he was able to preserve them. He, he bargained with Pharaoh for the land of Goshen and sent them there. They were preserved there. They had cattle and they were able to live their lives. And so, you know, the, the, the conclusion was that the brothers meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. But Egypt was never to be a permanent place, praise the Lord. It was only temporary. It was for the period that the famine lasted because God had already made a promise that he has a perfect place. But they got comfortable in Egypt and they enjoyed the food and they, 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 they enjoyed the, you know, the, the, the atmosphere and they forgot that there was a better place that the Lord had promised. Praise the Lord. And so we see it that they were there so long until Pharaoh died. And the Bible said there arose another Pharaoh who did not know, praise the Lord Jesus, Joseph and all the things. Praise God Almighty. He, 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 he now was, 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 he had no, he was now carrying feelings, put it this way, for the Egyptians, for the Israelites. And so he decided that, listen, these people are going to become mightier than us. And if we end up in a war, they might team up with our enemies. So let us suppress them. 
Praise God. It is dangerous for us to stay in a temporary place too long. And this is why we have to be led by the Spirit of the Lord because God is always guiding the steps of His children. He orders our steps. And this is why we are encouraged, praise the Lord, in Proverbs that we ought to lean not on our own understanding, but we ought to acknowledge Him in all our ways and He will direct our paths. And so they were there in Egypt, amen, until they found themselves in slavery. And the Bible said that they cried because now the burden of slavery was too much. And the Lord would have sent a deliverer in Moses, praise the Lord. But when deliverance came, the people wanted to remain in Egypt. It was tough. They cried to be delivered. But when deliverance came, they were afraid of the unknown that lies ahead. Lies ahead. Because listen, God was now going to take them out of captivity, but it was a journey or a process to get to promise. Praise the Lord. I'm here to tell us that getting to the promise is a walk of faith. We must trust the unfailing, infallible hands of God. He knows the way. He is the end and the beginning. He is the first and the last and everything in between. Praise the Lord. And so while he was taking them from Egypt to the promised land, the Bible said that the people were stuck. Physically, they were out of Egypt. But mentally, they were still there. Praise the Lord. I know it's a secular artist, but it was uh, Bob Marley that said that we must, you know, uh, we must be um, liberated from mental slavery. And that's the truth, that ex the true experience that the children of Israel had. They were coming out of a place of slavery, going to a place of promise. But they held on in their minds, praise the Lord Jesus, to the experiences that they had. So much so that if it was possible, they would go back into Egypt. They cried to their deliverer Moses and said, man, you should have left us in Egypt because you carried us out here to kill us. Praise the Lord. And the reality is that there is no progress that we can make as children of God if we keep looking back. And God is calling us to a, 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 a state of steadfastness. He is saying that we ought to set our eyes on the prize. Praise the Lord. We can't be going forward and looking back. We are bound to fall. Praise the Lord. We have to let go of the things that we once had in order to hold on to the things that are ahead. God wants to make his people a movement. Amen. But if we keep looking back, we will end up being a monument just as Lot's wife. She was being called out of Sodom and Gomorrah. But she ended up looking back and there is no progress that we can make. She became a statue. A monument, a statue of salt. Praise the Lord. And so God is saying to us, some of us need to let go of the things that we are holding on to. Because we are trying to carry over into our new liberated life things of our former life. And it can't work. Praise the Lord Jesus. Paul uses the example. He says, I press. Praise the Lord Jesus. One thing I do, I forget the things that are behind and I reach for the things that are ahead. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. There are better things on before, but we cannot grasp or hold on to these things if we are holding on to the things of the former life. So God is saying, set your affection, brethren, on things above. There has to be a change of heart. Hallelujah. The things that we so love and desire has to change because it is affecting our progress as children of God. There are things that we entertain that are contrary to the will of God. They are, they are hindrances to the progress that the Lord wants us to make as his children. You know, I had an experience some years ago and I, 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 you know, really learned from it. And I heard it mentioned one time after. Amen. I used to live at this apartment and ever so often I would wake up going into the kitchen and I would feel cobwebs all over my face. Praise the Lord. And I would, you know, 
remove the cobwebs and so on, go to work, come back in. And in the nights, I would feel cobwebs again. And for a time, I had to be cleaning cobwebs, cleaning cobwebs. And the reality hit me one morning as I was, you know, taking the cobwebs out of my face. Something came to me and said, you need to kill the spiders. The reality is that the cobwebs didn't just turn up there. They were placed there by spiders. And a lot of us, we are finding ourselves in trouble because we fail to deal with the root causes. Praise the Lord Jesus. God wants us to deal with the causes. We are fighting the symptoms but not treating with the cause. And a lot of us, we get ourselves mixed up with a lot of things. We fail to set ourselves apart from the things of this world. So much so that seeds are planted in our lives that result in problems. A lot of the things that we face is because of seeds that we have sown. We have allowed them to be sown in our spirits. So much so till they get to the point of germination. They grow into mature trees and start to bring fruit. Praise the Lord. God is saying that we ought to set ourselves apart. We have got to let go of the things of the world. There can be no two ways. There can be no double standards. Praise the Lord Jesus. The Bible encourages us that there is no communion between light and darkness. Amen. God has no fellowship with Baal. We must be for the Lord and for the Lord only. So if I could borrow from the words of Elijah the prophet to the people, he says, choose ye this day whom ye will serve. If God be God, serve him. And if Baal be God, serve Baal. Praise the Lord Jesus. God is upset. God is not pleased because of the mixing and the mingling, praise the Lord Jesus, with the things of this life. We have got to set ourselves, hallelujah, apart from the affairs of this world and run the race with patience. Praise the Lord. And so what God was saying to me on that morning, I believe that it was maybe just the Lord who just dropped it in my spirit, that you have got to treat with the source of the problem. Get rid of the spiders. And they were just, you know, when I, when I started to look, I, I could find some annonces in some little corners be, behind some boxes. And they looked so innocent. Praise the Lord Jesus. But they were the cause of the webs. And so we have got to start assessing our lives to see when we start to see certain things manifesting in our lives, we have to trace it back to the root Praise the Lord. Ever so often what we do is we cut off just the head. But we don't pluck it up from the root. And once the root is still there, it is going to spring up again. I have some experience with farming. And ever so often we have to be, be paying men to cut the field. Because once you cut it and the rain falls, two twos it needs to be cut again. But if you really want to get rid of the wheat, you have got to use something that will get into the plant and get to the very root of the plant. Praise the Lord Jesus. And that's what we have to do as children of God. Maybe we have to assess our associations. Because the Bible tells us, be not deceived. Filthy communication, corrupt, good manners. Praise the Lord Jesus. If we find ourselves associating with the things of the enemy, not long we're going to find it in our possession. Amen. I often give the example of, of my experience some years ago where I, I, I found myself in a little accident. I was parking and, and, and very tight spot, very new driver, got my license maybe just a few weeks and, you know, parking into a very tight spot. And when I was coming out, I bounced the car beside me, brushed it, and I was so frightened that what flew out of my mouth, you would expect that it would be Jesus Christ or my gosh or something like that but when I heard what flew out of my mouth I had to stop the vehicle I, 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 I don't know where it came from now when I did the assessment I recognized that I had some interactions that my it was the same things that my friends would say and so it taught me a lesson that if you lie with dogs expect to get fleas Praise the Lord Jesus. That birds of a feather flock together. 
And so sometimes we don't recognize that we are grasping, we are taking on some of the behaviors and the actions of those with, with, with whom we interact. And this is why the Lord is saying that I want my people to be consecrated, set apart, sanctified for my use. There can be no mixing or mingling. So the Lord would have given instructions, praise the Lord Jesus, to Moses. And he gave instructions again to Joshua. He said, listen, I want you not to make any league with the people of the land that I am giving you. When you go there, you must utterly destroy them. Because, listen, if you give your sons to their daughters, and if you give their daughters to your sons, then they are going to cause you to fall by serving their gods. Praise the Lord. And this thing will become a snare unto you. So the Lord is saying, I want you for myself. I want you preserved, sanctified, undefiled for myself. And so, Virgin, I am here tonight to encourage us that we have to take stock because the enemy is very cunning. He is sneaking some things in, praise the Lord Jesus, into our spirits. And we are adapting to some of the things that are the enemies. They look innocent. They look harmless. But the reality is that they are wolves in sheep's clothing. Praise the Lord. And this is why, as children of God, we are encouraged by Scripture that we should walk in the Spirit. Because the Lord will give us that revelation that this thing looks good, but it's bad. Amen. If we trust and we depend on God, hallelujah, amen, to order our steps, if we consult him in all our ways, he has promised to direct our path. And so, Bridget, every time that we are about to make a decision, we are about to make a move, we ought to consult the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why he give us his spirit the Bible says, because it will lead us in all truth. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we are to set our desires. When there is that earnest desire for things above, praise the Lord Jesus, we will be willing to let go of some things that we value here on earth because we have done the analysis. We have made a conclusion that the things that lie ahead are better Hallelujah. Than the things that we currently possess. Ah, oh God. And so oftentimes we find that we are not as effective as the Lord would have us. Because there are hindrances. And so he encourages us that we should lay aside every weight and the sin. Praise the Lord Jesus. That so easily beset us. Listen. The race car drivers, I don't know if any of us are familiar with Formula One or NASCAR and, and, and you name it. Or if you should even go down to Dover here in Jamaica. Those race cars that you see are oftentimes modified. What the drivers will do is they will take out the extra seats. The back seat, take it out. The passenger seat, take it out. They will modify the very glass that they use. Some of them take out the glass and they put in uh, carbon fiber and you name it, fiberglass. They, if there is a sunroof, they will take it out. They modify the vehicles. They pull down the very dashboard. When you're going there, the only thing you see are the things that are essential to make the vehicle move. Why are they doing this? They are shedding the extra weight. Because the engine of the vehicle has to pull all of that weight. So the lighter they can make the vehicle is the quicker they will move. And so God is saying to us that we ought to set aside, lay them aside, the weight. This world has so much baggage. Hallelujah. This world has so much weight. Work has weight. Family has weight. Friends have weight. You name it. Weight all around. And notice... He differentiated between sin and weight. So it's not just about sinning, but there are distractions, things that are not necessarily sin, things that consume our time, unproductive, but we indulge in them. Things that don't give any glory to God, not sinful, but waste of time. 
Praise the Lord. And the Lord is saying, if you want to move faster, if you want to go higher, you have got to shed some weight. We've got to search our cupboards. We've got to look under our beds. We've got to get into the trunk. Praise the Lord Jesus. You never find a race car with all sorts of stuff in the trunk. Every bag is taken out because they are preparing themselves for a race. Hallelujah. And the performance is dependent on their preparedness. Praise God. And so I'm here to encourage us, brethren, that we have got to start shedding some weights. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. We've got to be shedding weights. We must be sensitive to the devices of the enemy. Because if the enemy cannot get us to sin, he's going to do his next best. He's going to cause us to be distracted, to lose focus, to, 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 to shift our priorities, to have things out of work. But the Lord is calling his people today, hallelujah, back into focus. Set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. I don't want to get adjusted to this world. Hallelujah. Yes, there are some pleasures that I enjoy. Yes, there are some goals that I want to achieve. Yes, there is some things that I want to accomplish. But at the end of the day, if I fail to accomplish those, I must ensure that my heavenly mission is fulfilled. At the end of my walk, praise the Lord, my time on this earth, I must be able to say like Paul, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Praise the Lord Jesus. There is a crown for all of us to receive. But we've got to run this, faith, this race. We've got to endure to the end. Praise the Lord Jesus. The Lord has promised to keep us. Hallelujah. He has promised to preserve us. Praise the Lord Jesus. We've got to put our trust and our confidence in him. Let us start laying up our treasures in heaven. Let us do a check of our accounts. Hallelujah. What have we accomplished for the kingdom of God? How has been my performance as an ambassador for Christ? What more is required of me to do? We've got to start asking all of these things. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because there is a heaven for us to receive. And we've got to let go of this world to get it. Just as the people of Israel had to let go of Egypt in order for them to reach the promised land. So sad that of the, the thousands that left Egypt, only a few Praise the Lord Jesus, made it into the promised land. They were so bombarded by the diet of Egypt. They were so bombarded by the, 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 the things that they had there. Praise the Lord. We used Lot's wife as an example. Maybe she had built an, an empire and she was now having to leave everything behind and start scratch. When God calls us into his kingdom, he is calling us to start fresh. A new start to start building. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are become new. And so the Lord, through his word, is encouraging us and reminding us that we must be transformed, hallelujah, by the renewing of our minds. We have got to start thinking different. We have start, got to start thinking like the citizens of heaven that we now are. We have got to let go of our earthly citizenship. Praise the Lord Jesus. And we've got to start focusing on heaven. My life here on earth must be a preparation for my heavenly life which is to come. Praise God Almighty. Brethren, do not be distracted. Remain sober. Be watchful. Be vigilant. Praise the Lord Jesus. Guard our hearts. Guard our minds. Don't allow the garden of our minds, praise the Lord Jesus, to, to, to be this, this sowing ground of the seeds of the enemy. Because he is just out there throwing seeds. Throwing seeds to see which one can catch. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so we have got to be vigilant, watchful, guarding our minds. 
I wish that we could just lay our hands on our heads and say, Lord, keep my mind. Preserve my mind, Lord. Because when the enemy wants to come in, oftentimes we will let him in. Because he oftentimes comes with things that we like. But if the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, is that watchman over our minds, he will say, listen to me, this is not good for you. The end result is not good. And so today, tonight, I encourage us, praise the Lord Jesus, think on things above. Do a valuation. Do a weighing. Praise the Lord. Remember, I know oftentimes we lose track of it because we are living in the world. The demands of this life are so present. They are so pressing. We feel it in our bodies. We, we, we hear it on the television. We, we experience it at work. This is a real life. We have obligations. We have responsibilities. But heaven is also real. And the Lord is saying to us, Though you are in the world, you should not be of the world. Don't be consumed by it. Praise the Lord Jesus. Better is on before. Any day now, we will be going home. Count the years as months. Hallelujah. Count the months as weeks. Count the weeks as days. Any day now, we are going to make our exit from this world. That house. That you are putting before the house of the Lord. You're going to leave it behind. Praise the Lord Jesus. That, that, that account that you are trying to beef up. Those stocks that you are, you are spending so much time to, to study the market. So you can make the right choice to know when to buy and to sell. It's going to be left behind. Praise the Lord Jesus. We have eternity to look towards. Let us not be distracted by time. Praise the Lord Jesus. God is saying, set your affections on things above, not on things on this earth. Praise the Lord Jesus. Live like the redeemed, born again, citizens of heaven that we are. Praise God Almighty. God bless you tonight. I know it was not as, 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 as lengthy as uh, you know it usually is but it's just my way of encouraging us tonight i didn't even get to go into some of the scriptures that we have that i have here praise the lord jesus but i just felt as though i needed to remind the body of the lord that we are citizens of heaven praise the lord jesus and that an assessment needs to be made to ensure that we are putting the right things on our list of priorities we have to do some rearranging brethren we have to spend some time, look at the things that we are focusing on. And if we need to make the adjustments, we make it. Spending time doing everything else other than the things of God. No, God is saying, in these last and closing days, I have work for us to do. Work that would keep us up 24 sevens. Praise the Lord Jesus. God is coming back for a prepared people. And so he is in the process of fine-tuning his church. And if you are sensitive to what God has been saying in recent times, if you listen to the, the messages and the studies and so on, it is a message or it is a season of preparation. God is calling us back to focus because many of us, we have lost our focus. Praise the Lord Jesus. And God is saying, it is time for us to turn the tables, set our affections, hallelujah, on things above, not on things of this earth get rid of the excess baggage get rid of the weight and the sin that so easily beset us praise the lord jesus god bless you tonight i trust that our hearts were truly blessed and i pray that the words of the lord will take root in our hearts and that you know they will find good soil come up to bring forth fruit Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, let us just pray. Amen. Just to, to, to dismiss. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your words that you have spoken. A word of encouragement in our hearts, Lord, to get us in line. Father God, we pray that we will be receptive to your words. I pray you grant understanding, Lord Jesus, to our spirits that we will be able to digest that which you have spoken. Lord Jesus, we ask that you will help us to consider our ways and to set our affections on things above, to look to you, Lord Jesus, and to make the necessary adjustments in our lives. 
take full control. I present us, your people, in your hands. Continue to be with us through the rest of this week. Have your divine way. Keep us in your will and keep our minds stayed on you. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just before we go, I mean, there are just um, uh, a couple of announcements that we want to make a mention of. Praise the Lord. The first is our community health and wellness fair that comes this Saturday, June 24th. Praise the Lord. Faith Chapel, Faith Apostolic Ministries in association with the Tarrant High School. Praise God will be putting on the community health and wellness fair. Several services will be offered. Amen. And these are all free. Praise the Lord Jesus. Eye screening, blood pressure tests, cholesterol checks, uh, you name it. Amen. HIV testing uh, and many more. Praise the Lord. And so we just want to remind persons to pass this information on to your relatives and to your friends. And take along with you your IDs and uh, your TRN. Praise the Lord Jesus. And, you know, come out, come out, come out early. Amen. Get this thing done. Amen. Let us put some emphasis on our health. Praise the Lord. God bless you. So it's this Saturday at the Tarrant High School. And um, also, we must remind you that Manifest is just around the corner. Manifest the North American edition. Praise the Lord. And so we ask the saints to continue to pray. Amen. For its success. Pray for the choir. Pray for the organizers that the Lord will have his way. It's up there in uh, New York. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Um, St. Albans. Amen. And it's uh, July, July 7th and 8th. Praise the Lord. 2023. And tickets are, are, are already available. Amen. And so on. So we ask that you bear this in mind. Go out. Get your tickets. Support it in any way that you can. And of course, pray for its success. Amen. So God bless you. Amen. God bless you. And may the peace of the Lord that passeth all understanding remain in our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name. Praise God. <laughs>